Oh, look at that fish on a spinner bait, guys. <laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen. And we're going to go through all the details that I know. Holy cow, that's a fat fish. All the details I know about fishing a spinner bait. <clears throat> After I catch a few more. hammered it. <laughs> oh. Man, I love a spinner bait. All right, the spinner bait. Well, first of all, I shot my intro two days ago. That's why I'm not wearing the same clothes. But anyway, we're gonna go through the details about the spinner bait, um, and maybe even some you really didn't know or didn't consider. And uh, yeah, well, let's just get started. All right, so to me, spinner baits have always been kind of confusing they've been you know what do i use when and all these different combinations you've got tandems you've got single blade you've got tandem willow leaf you got tandem colorado you got willow leaf colorado blades you got chartreuse and white green pumpkins reds browns every color in the in the in the rainbow and uh which ones are best for what and how do you simplify them so that's what my attempt is going to be today First of all, I've got a Colorado bladed spinner bait. We're gonna talk about that first. This is the this is the type of spinner bait that I use the most. Um, it just seems to get the most attention, unless I'm in super clear water, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. But if the water is stained, you know, four foot visibility or less. If it's stained to, to muddy, I'm throwing a Colorado bladed spinner bait. And uh, and let me tell you the advantages of it. All right. So when this big, when this Colorado bladed, it, it spins. It creates a lot of vibration. The larger that blade, the more vibration you get. Uh, another thing is it's got a lot more drag than say a willow leaf. It's got so when you when you're cranking it, you can actually feel that it's pulling, it's a little bit harder to, to, to reel than a, a willow leaf. And that's because of all the vibration it's putting off and all the drag that it's got. Um, it really does get the attention of bass if they can't see it. Say, that's why I say stained water all the way to muddy water. You throw it and it will, um, it'll attract the fish before they even get a chance to see it. Um, grass. Now the bigger blades, they don't work really good in the grass. It does get tangled up in the grass quite a bit. This, I don't even know, I can't remember what size blade this is. I think it's a number four. It's either a number three or number four. But anyway, that's the, the largest blade that I would go to if I was fishing grass because it doesn't quite get hung up as much. But ultimately, you're gonna wanna fish a willow leaf blade. All right, so another time it's really, really good is when the water temperature gets below 60 degrees. Um, I, for some reason, that 60 degree mark, it, because you can reel it a lot slower and that, that, and that it gets the attention of the fish a lot more, they tend to react a lot more to it. So 60 degrees and below, I'm putting up the willow leaf and I'm going to the Colorado blade. Um, I right, saw so blade combinations for a Colorado blade. I only go double Colorado unless it's super cold and I'm doing a technique called um, crawling, what do, what do they call it? Slow rolling a spinnerbait. When you're slow rolling a spinnerbait, like early, early in the spring, all through winter, spinnerbait works good. But my favorite time is just as the top water temperature starts to go back up, I grab a big Colorado blade, as big as I can get, three quarter ounce spinnerbait, all the way up to maybe even an, a one ounce of, and throw it out and let it sink to the bottom and just slowly roll it. You're using about a six three to one gear ratio reel just because there's so much drag on that blade that it will, it, it'll wear you out if you do it all day long with a seven three or an eight one to one. So uh, six six to one, I'm sitting there just kind of slowly, slowly reeling it and you're just bring it up off the bottom and you're just slowly crawling it. 
great great technique early in the spring and when it's muddy i go to a bigger blade as well uh, i'll up this to a five or a six size blade and single colorado is good when it's really super muddy but the trick is to throw it up and bang it up against as much thick cover as you possibly can when it's muddy because when it's muddy the bass move shallow and they move right up against the cover say there's a stick right here they're going to be sitting right there so make sure that you hit that stick multiple angles multiple times with a spinner bait but a Colorado blade is where it's at when it comes to anything stained all the way to muddy water. All right, so let's talk about a, a, a willow leaf. Oh yeah, it's a willow leaf. <laughs> all right, so a willow leaf. Um, let me find, oops, let's go with this one right here. All right, so a willow leaf blade. This is, one of those i do during when it's super clear water or when the bass are super super aggressive and then they're keying in on small bait that kind of stuff i'll throw a willow leaf and for some reason this has become the most popular uh, kind of spinner bait and i don't understand that when you look at the at the the racks in the in the bait store and the tackle store it's mostly will it's mostly tan of willow leaf when i catch more fish on the colorado blade it doesn't make any sense to me so anyway so I usually run a tandem when I'm covering water. I'll run a, a, a tandem and I'll run a, a willow leaf on the bottom, a Colorado blade right here, just giving me a little bit of thump. It's really good in grass. It's good around thick cover. But like I said, when they're keying in on small bait, I usually am gonna go, go with this and not go with a Colorado blade or when it's clear. And that's usually the only time I, I, I do that. Another technique that I'll use, and spe specifically this style, when I am use a tandem willow leaf where there's got a willow leaf here and one here, is burning. Spotted bass lakes, smallmouth bass lakes, anything that's got a really aggressive fish in it, throw it out and start reeling and keep that bait just barely under the surface where it's waking behind it, but it's not breaking the surface. And you're just burning it as fast as you can, covering a lot of water, but just burning it. And those aggressive fish will come out and tag it. But I like to use, this is a uh, an SOB Lures Mini Me, and I've been using this one for years. It's got a weight, it's got a hidden weight here. It's a smaller bait. And so for those spotted bass lakes and those smallmouth baits, that's actually a really, really good spinner bait. It's a small, compact deal. And also for coming through grass, that's a good spinner bait. Um, and you still got to rip it through grass and stuff like that. But anyway, so that's when I use that and that's when I burn the spinner bait. All right, so let's talk about colors. Simple. Look right here, white, chartreuse, white and chartreuse and maybe a couple of bluegill deals. So, but mainly white and chartreuse. I'm trying to, to, I'm trying to mimic a shad or a bluegill, and that's it. Um, and so, I uh, keep my colors very, very simple, and I, they've never, ever let me down. All right, so the, as for weights, I really do keep it simple. Three-eighths or half ounce, and then when I'm I'm slow rolling, it's gonna be three-quarter or a half or a full ounce, but uh, mainly three-eighths and a half ounce. I love a half ounce, especially when I'm covering large, vast parts of water, like big, huge flats, because I can make a little bit further cast, but three-eighths ounce, is typically what I'm throwing in and around cover and making short accurate gas with. Hi guys, one thing I forgot to talk about is trailers and trailer hooks. Um, very seldom do I put a trailer on my spinner bait. I just think that it, uh, I've never seen where it really helps or it really hurts. So I don't put it on there. I just don't waste the time doing it. Now, if I'm gonna put a trailer on there, the only one that I've ever used and had any success with are the split tail trailers by Zoom. Um, trailer hooks, if the fish are short striking, if you get one or two fish that come up and hit the back end of it, but don't get the bait good, um, you can put a trailer hook on there and, and, per, and perhaps catch the next fish that's maybe short striking. But uh, typically when they short strike, it's because they don't really want it and I switch to something else. Else. you know something a little bit slower something like a fluke or maybe a jerk bait or something like that so very seldom do I use a trailer hook and very seldom do I use a trailer all right so here's one of those little deals that a lot of people don't know and don't think about and let me find the right spinner bait here we go man this plano box keeps them keeps them in there all right, so when you're talking about running through 
thick cover and running through mainly bushes and blowdowns and things like that, trees. And you look at this front arm right here. See that arm right there? See that front arm right there? The shorter this arm, the easier it comes through cover. So when you're picking out a spinner bait, so this is the mini me spinner bait. Look how long the arm, the, the that arm of that spinner bait is. This one will get hung more. What happens is it's coming along and it goes over the 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 wood, and if you're going slow enough, it will flip over before it gets through. And that arm right there is what causes it to flip. So the shorter that arm, the less time it has to flip. And so it hits that arm and just keeps on going. So the shorter that arm the more snag proof it is. And so especially for you guys, for you bank fishermen and stuff like that, look for those short arms. They used to make a, um, oh, what was it? A Hank Parker special, and I don't know if they still do. It had a really short arm, and it was really good for coming through cover. But that's usually what I look at is when I'm picking them out. If I'm looking for one to come through cover, I'm looking for a really short arm one. And like, and all of these baits and the, and the, uh, the links to these baits are all gonna be in the description. So, and the boxes and everything else I'll show you. All right, storage. I store mine two different ways, and it's all up to you. This is that nice little spinnerbait box. I make a buzzbait box, too, uh, that Plano makes. I really like this for in the boat. But when I'm in my kayak, where space is limited, I go with... Oops, this, back, this, this one's open. I go with a worm bag, and it holds a lot of spinnerbaits. The biggest thing is, is it does not hold buzz baits. It will flatten buzz baits, totally ruin your blades. But that's, and this is also where I keep my extras. But uh, in a, in just a regular worm bag, one of these little totes, pretty neat little, little deal. So those are the two ways that I know of to store your spinner baits. All right, so if you are working your way through grass, and like this is what I've been doing this week on Gunnersville is fishing uh, out of big, huge grass flats and ripping it through grass. You get it hung up and you rip it through the grass. Well, to keep it from snagging up as much, take it and squish this down and make it a, a thinner profile this way and you'll find that you'll get hung up a whole lot less. Just kind of squish it and do it like that. Nothing I want to talk about is how to tune a spinnerbait. After you've caught a fish or two fish, you caught a big fish and it's whaled on it, and you, your spinnerbait can be all bent up and bent out of shape. The way to tune it is turn it and face you. Make sure, now I want to show, I want to show you, I'm going to face you with this. See how that blade, that, that arm is not in line with that hook? I just want to twist it until it's in line. Just like that. And this will get, the bottom arm will get messed up too. Just make sure that everything, everything is in line. And that'll run your spinnerbait true. It won't turn over on its side as it's coming in. And I get more bites when it's running straight than I do any, time, any other time. So that's how you tune a spinnerbait. Since I'm launching this video in the fall, I really want to talk a little bit about um, about fishing it in the fall. And the reason I'm launching it in the fall is because this is my favorite time of the year to fish a spinnerbait. You get back to the backs of the creek, say it's late fall, mid to late fall, and the, the shad have pushed all the way back in the backs of the creeks, or even early fall when they've pushed up shallow uh, just in the pockets and, and working their way back to the backs of the creeks. A spinnerbait is one, a good bait to cover water. Two, it looks like a several, it looks like several different bait fish. And three, it comes through just about anything. So grass, wood, rock, anything, it'll, it'll come through a whole lot easier than a lot of other baits. So you can cover water fast to find that giant school of fish. You can, uh, you can fish grass, you can fish huge grass flats really, really efficiently. And that's kind of what I did this week is I found these giant grass flats and I knew there was a school of fish somewhere in these flats, but I didn't know where. And I would throw that spinner bait and just work, fan cast and move and fan cast and move and fan cast and move and cover that entire flat. When you're running the bank, just put the trolling motor on or walk the bank or whatever and just throw it along. And you're just gonna cast and reel and bump it through cover. And as you come over top of those those trees or those lay downs and cover off stuff like that, you hit anything, anything, it comes over, just stop for a split second. So for instance, I'll use a chatterbait and I'll show you. 
So say you're, you're reeling along, you hit something, and all I do is I stop for this long, and that's it. Just like a half a second pause. And that allows that, blade, that bait to fall back down and that blade will spin just a little bit. And if there's a fish that's following you or it's looking up at you, it's going to hit just right then. So fall fishing is a whole lot of fun. Grab a spinner bait and have a blast with it. All right, so, all right. So last but not least, and down in the description with rods, I'm gonna give you a list of the different rods that I use for spinner baits. Cause there are certain techniques that need a stiffer rod. There are, you know, and there's there are techniques that need a, a, a little bit more flexible rod. So I'm gonna make that list down there just totally separate. I always run a seven three to one gear ratio unless I'm slow rolling, then I go to six six to one. But almost always I'll have a seven three to one gear ratio reel. My go-to rod is a medium heavy moderate. Okay. What I get with a medium heavy moderate is I get a stiffer rod where I can really set the hook. And you know, you look at the spinnerbait hooks, they're not thin wire hooks. They're kind of a medium, well, that was rusty. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave a spinner or a trailer on there. But anyway, uh, they're, they're, not, they're not thin. So it takes a little bit of force to get them in there. So a medium heavy moderate rod is ideal for it. A short one, this is a seven foot two. I even like 610, 611 medium heavy moderate if you can find them. But um, it's also my fluke rod. Um, but you need that stiff rod to be able to set the hook and to rip it out of grass and things like that. So I've been fishing really aggressive this week in, in the milfoil and you get hung in the grass and you gotta rip it and you want that stiff rod so where you, you don't have to rip it super hard. You just kinda, you're reeling it along and you, and, you, and you feel it hit the grass and you just pop it. And you reel it along and feel the grass and you just pop it. And if you have a rod like this seven foot four um, chatter crank rod that's got a lot more flex, you don't have the power that you need to rip it through the grass. And so a short, medium heavy, moderate rod is ideal for that power fishing technique of uh, using a spinner bait. Now, if I'm finessing, if I'm working, um, how do I say this? If I'm not ripping it through stuff, I'm not really hitting aggressive stuff, if I'm just uh, fishing through bushes and trees and things like that hard cover I'm gonna go with something a little bit more flex a little bit more give and what that do what that will do two things you get bit and the fish it's harder for the fish to throw it because all that that flex in the rod is fighting it so you lose fewer fish and number two you don't get snagged up as much that rod as it comes up over top of the the, um, the limb or whatever it's gonna get snagged on that rod will actually flex into it and then pull the bait through as it frees itself through the through the um through the brush and so a little bit more flexible rod so this is that chatter crank rod that i use all the time for a whole bunch of different things and then a medium heavy moderate short rod for for good thick heavy stuff um that's it guys that's that's spinner baits in a nutshell um they're not as confusing as you think they are and a lot of people have forgotten that they even exist but i'm telling you they catch the snot out of fish especially in the fall um just saw a fish jump right over there sorry got distracted but anyway like i always say be sure to introduce somebody to fishing introduce them to my channel let me help you teach them how to fish more importantly get out of the water go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day we'll see you